Big Harp, born Joshua Harper, and Little Harp, born William Harper, were American murderers, highwaymen and river pirates who operated in Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois and Mississippi in the late 18th century. They are often considered the earliest documented serial killers in the United States history. Loyal to the British Crown during the American Revolution, the Harps became outlaws after the war and began robbing and killing settlers in the remote frontier west of the Appalachian Mountains. They are believed to have killed 39 people, and possibly as many as 50. As the Harps' crimes gained notoriety, vigilante groups formed to avenge their victims, and they were eventually tracked down and executed around the turn of the century. Their savagery has since entered American folklore, appearing to have been motivated more by bloodlust than financial gain. Sometime during 1797, the Harps began a vicious crime spree through Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois. The Harps later confessed to the killings of a confirmed 39 people, but the estimated combined total, including unknown victims, may number more than 50. What follows are the accounts of a few of the murders the two committed. In 1797, while the Harps were living near Knoxville, Tennessee, they were driven from the town after being charged with stealing hogs and horses. They were also accused of murdering a man named Johnson, whose body was found in a river, covered in urine and ripped open, with the chest cavity filled and weighted down with stones. This became a signature corpse disposal method of the Harps serial killings. They reportedly butchered anyone at the slightest provocation. They even murdered babies. From Knoxville, the Harps fled north into Kentucky. They entered the state on the Wilderness Road near the Cumberland Gap. They are believed to have murdered a peddler named Peyton, taking his horse and some of his goods. In December, they murdered two travelers from Maryland. Next, a man named John Langford, who was traveling from Virginia to Kentucky, turned up dead and a local innkeeper pointed the authorities to the Harps. The criminal pair was pursued, captured, and jailed in the state prison in Danville, Kentucky, but they managed to escape. When a posse was sent after them, the young son of a man who assisted the authorities was found dead and mutilated by the Harps in retaliation. On April 22, 1799, Kentucky Governor James Garrard placed a $300 reward on each of the Harps' heads. Fleeing northward, the Harps killed two men named Edmonton and Stump. When they were near the mouth of the Saline River in southern Illinois, they came upon three men encamped there and killed them. The pair then made their way to Cave in Rock, a natural cave on the bluffs above the Illinois bank of the Ohio River and a stronghold of the river pirate and criminal gang leader Samuel Mason. A posse had been aggressively pursuing them but stopped just short of the cave on the opposite shore in Kentucky. With their wives and three children in tow, the Harps holed up with the Samuel Mason gang, who preyed on slow-moving flatboats making their way along the Ohio River. While the Mason gang could be ruthless, even they were appalled at the actions of the Harps. After the murderous pair began to make a habit of taking travelers to the top of the bluff, stripping them naked, and pushing them off, Samuel Mason forced the Harp brothers to leave. The Harps then returned to eastern Tennessee, where they continued their vicious murder spree. They killed a farmer named Bradbury, a man named Hardin, and a boy named Coffee in July 1798. Soon more bodies were discovered, including those of William Ballard, who had been disemboweled and thrown in the Holston River, James Brassel, who had his throat viciously slashed and was discovered on Brassel's knob, and John Tully. John Graves and his teenage son were found dead with their heads axed in south-central Kentucky. In Logan County, the Harps killed a little girl, a young slave, and an entire family they found asleep in their camp. In August 1799, a few miles northeast of Russellville, Kentucky, Big Harp bashed his infant daughter's head against a tree because her constant crying annoyed him. It would be the only crime for which he would later confess genuine remorse. That same month, a man named Trowbridge was found disemboweled in Highland Creek. When the Harps were given shelter at the Steagall home in Webster County, the pair killed an overnight guest named Major William Love, as well as Mrs. Moses Steagall's four-month-old baby boy, whose throat was slit when he cried. When Mrs. Steagall screamed at the sight of her infant being killed, she was also murdered. 
The Harp killings continued in July 1799 as the two fled west to avoid a new posse, organized by John Leeper, which included the avenging husband and father, Moses Stiegel. While the pair was preparing to kill another settler named George Smith, the posse finally tracked them down on August 24, 1799. The posse called for the Harps to surrender, but they attempted to flee. Mikaja Harp was shot in the leg and back by Leeper, who soon caught up with him and pulled him from his horse, subduing the outlaw with a tomahawk in a scuffle. As he lay dying, Mikaja Harp confessed to twenty murders. While Harp was still conscious, Moses Stiegel slowly cut off the outlaw's head. Later, the head was spiked on a pole at a crossroads near the Moses Stiegel cabin that is still known as Harp's Head or Harp's Head Road along a modern-day highway in Webster County, Kentucky. Wiley Harp successfully escaped the confrontation and rejoined the Mason Gang Pirates at Cave In Rock. For years later, Wiley Harp might have been captured along with the rest of the gang but went unrecognized because he was using the alias of John Sutton or John Sutton. Both Harp and Samuel Mason, the gang leader, escaped, but Mason was shot. Afterwards, Little Harp and another gang member, Peter Alston, who went by the name James May, son of the counterfeiter Philip Alston, tried to claim the bounty on Samuel Mason, although it is unclear whether Mason died from the wounds sustained during the escape or whether Harp killed him. Regardless, as they presented Mason's head, a Kentuckian recognized Harp and Alston as outlaws themselves, and the two men were arrested. The two soon escaped, but were quickly recaptured, tried, and sentenced to be hanged. In January 1804, Wiley Harp and Peter Alston were executed by hanging. Their heads were cut off and placed high on stakes along the Natchez Trace as a warning to other outlaws. If you found this video intriguing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating content.